Hey everybody, uh, Firebird Restoration Station. My name is John. These are the cars that make things happen for us here in the two car garage, proving to you that you can do a really nice, high quality restoration in a basic two car garage. And of course, just playing cars is the name of the game, educating you on the way and maybe having a few laughs. And like I like to say a hundred times, I'm gonna make this t-shirt. So if you guys want some t-shirts, check out below, but I'm doing this one up really soon. It says the right way, the wrong way, and maybe the VVG way. So. A lot of stuff has been self-taught, a lot of trial and error, learned a lot from my mistakes, and I'm hoping to save a lot for you by doing these videos and putting it out here. Now, this video we're going to do today, the amazing car flipper thing. I'm going to show you how this thing operates, why I came up with it, and I'll give you some dimensions and some measurements, too, in case you'd like to go ahead and try to build one, because I'll tell you, it's a huge back saver, time saver, works great for painting it, checking things out, finishing welding. It has so many advantages, and a lot of you have been asking some questions, so today is the day for the video on the car flipper. Well, let's start with a walk-on. You guys have seen this thing happening in the background of the videos. You've asked some questions and what's it all about and how's it work. So I'll get you a little closer look up because it's a, seriously, i get getting ready to take this thing off because I want to put this back onto here so I no longer need the car flipper doohickey thingy, whatever we want to call it. I have no idea. You guys got a cool name? Let me know in the comments down below, but just not feeling the creativity today. Um, but basically it's just chunks of steel here. Uh, two inch box tubing. You see the gauge here is not super heavy, but plenty heavy duty here for how I have the cylinder support. Probably overkill for the situation. I think an empty car body. I'm shooting from the hip here. Six, seven hundred pounds. That's really not as heavy as you would think it would be. Um, so this is probably way over engineered, but I literally drew it on some graph paper one day at work and kind of came up with the idea and drew it to scale and figure out how to where I was going to pivot it at. I guessed on the center of gravity. So as this thing tips up, it gets almost the point the cylinder's topped out. It kind of boom, goes the rest of the way over. Convertibles do a little better on this design. Coupes are just a little bit top heavy. It gets a little close top and wants to flop over. So you have to kind of tug it to get it to come back over. So just a little bit off, but again, I just guessed. So you could actually add a little counterway here to, I guess, offset that. It wouldn't have that quite that top heaviness when going over the center point, but I'll show you how that operates here in a few minutes, but get you kind of a close-up. Now these wheels, um, I probably wouldn't suggest putting those on. I did that to make this car body mobile to have it media blasted. The original two cars I did not, did not have the wheels. I just set this thing up on the floor and it worked just fine. I just did it to make the thing mobile to get it out of here. But the problem with the wheels is it really puts a lot more stress on the body. And I've actually caused a little bit of a, a dimple here in the rear new sheet metal. So I don't really recommend the tire and wheel setup on this. It needs something different to make it work. And then the, this is designed for a 69 body. These are adapters go for 67, 68. So again, I just kind of make this thing work as I go. But I'll show you how... All the measurements will work out if you want to try to make one, how it all bolts on. It actually comes apart with a simple one bolt hinge here. Then I stack this thing up in the corner of the garage and I store it. That way, if I want to use it later, it's always there. And also it takes up less garage space. So I'll show you how this thing operates first, then we'll get into the details. Well, I've just about completely worn myself out getting it to this point here. That does wear you out. It's a lot of hand pumping. Now, if a smart guy would probably get one of those pneumatic engine lift cylinders, that would work real nice. Go pump that thing right up and get it to go no problem whatsoever. The original design, I was going to put two cylinders, one on the front and one on the back. And then I realized one was more than ample lifting power. This is only about halfway up, so it's neither up nor down. Ha, ha. Um, but as it goes up, it, like I said, it gets to a certain point, it just wants to flip up. I just want to kind of show you some of the details up close, because right now it's in front of our face. This here is a whole lot thicker than probably needed. Um, it's like two inch box tubing. Um, I had some thicker stuff. Now, this here is thinner down here. This is probably sufficient to build what we have here. Uh, again, it was over-engineered because, well, I just is the material that I had was available to me, and I made it work. Same thing, probably over-engineered. Now, the, how it attaches to the body, this is your body mount here, right where the subframe attaches. This is a chunk of steel. Uh, and it was a nice angled piece that we had found on some of our equipment but for trash. So I already had nice holes put in it too, so I just reused the holes. Now, I did add some gussets here to give us a little more strength, and it probably wouldn't hurt to tie something here to here, um, but it seemed to work so far. Again, this is the third car I've used it on, and it's worked out really nice. So we've obviously tied the body here, and the same thing at the other end. Run your bolts right up into it. So it's the factory cage nut body mount. So it works fantastic. It's very secure to the body. Now the hinges. 
Again, didn't over-engineer this thing. It's very archaic, super simple. 3 8 plate steel. I cut four pieces for the front, four pieces the rear, so basically eight chunks exactly the same. Drill holes through them, and you can see it's a half-inch bolt. This is a lock nut, so it can't walk off. And as long as it's just snug, it'll pivot fine and also will not walk back and forth. So this works great. Super low budget, you could say. Not overly complicated hinge. And being I put two on here, it keeps it from twisting. So it's very tight fit. The bolt is real snug. Just, I added a bit that just clears it. And of course, the shoulder on the bolt is a nice pivot too. So that works out really good. And if you see here, there's a mechanical stop. When this goes all the way up, Plunk, it rests there because I don't want this thing to continue to go all the way over or the center of gravity is going to tip too far that way. I won't be able to pull the body back over by myself and that's not going to be no good. Now what you see here, we'll call this a safety prop. If I haven't got all the way up yet, this thing is all the way up. This little thing here fits in this pocket here. That way if the cylinder were to fail, I have some kind of problem. It can't come down on top of me. So that's kind of the front. Now this little leg here, what that is for, when this thing's laid all the way back down on the ground, that sits on the floor. Because uh, if not, like I said, with a hinge design, it's gonna continue to fall down. So this is kind of basically just rest on the floor, a little jack stand, you could say. So that's what that is all about. This is the front. Now, of course, we got a lathe that comes back to here. That gives us plenty of a footprint when it's flipped all the way up so the car doesn't tip over that way. Now, the wheel apparatus again, that was something I added for this last trip. I don't necessarily recommend doing that. I'm not super happy with that. Uh, it just causes the thing to want to kind of twist a whole lot on the body. The front's not too bad, but the back, and I actually did some damage to it, so I got to do some working on it. Now, you see a ratchet strap. I did that to help tie the back and the front back together. This little bracket here. I originally ran the same, the same box tubing from front to back, but as I flipped the car body up, it came really close to the side of the car, so I omitted it without the wheels it works fine without that brace. But with the wheels on, again, it wants to kind of kick it out to the side. So um, I'll give you the dimensions without wheels. And if you guys want to try to rig up something like that, make those work great. They are totally removable. Pull the screw out. That whole apparatus comes out. But again, I don't like the wheels. Now back here in the back, same thing. Um, plenty of thickness. This is the thinner gauge stuff here. Plenty of meat. It's the exact same thing as the front, reversed. Same plates tied in together. Now where it ties into the body, this was really originally yeah, originally engineered for 1969. This bolts right up nice and tight to the body. Well, 67 and 68, tail panels tip back a little further, and the bolts from side to side are wider apart. So I made adapter plates, welded nuts onto it. Makes it where one hand operation kind of thing. Run the bolts and snug. So this attaches where the bumper attaches. But you can see here, took a little damage when loading and unloading it off the trailer. So that was the thing as it was flexing. You know, it caused some damage to my tail panel. So I got to do some hammering and dolling and I'll get those dents worked out. Did the same thing with that, but actually bowed it a little bit more on that end. So not happy with the wheels. Now this is just basically angle iron that I came up with. Cut a piece, cut a piece, had this laying against the body, tack, 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 and I burned it all in. Um, that seemed to work really nice. So to get you exact dimensions on that, well, I don't know if I can or not, but I'll let you sight down this here. As you can see, that's straight ahead, and you see these things are leaning in just a little bit. Again, if you're doing a 1969, I bolted this chunk of steel right to the rear of the car, and I kept trimming this thing back till I got the dimensions right, and then I just burned it in. Then I added this strut with the idea when the thing flipped up on its side, these towers may be kind of flimsy, so I just tied it like that then reversed it on that end just the same. So now, you see how it works, pretty simple. Oh yeah, same thing, kickstand here on the back, and then my prop's supposed to bolt in there, but the prop doesn't work with the wheels on the back, so I'll put that back in at some point, um, ties into this. So you see how it operates, super basic as for operation. Of course, you're gonna need some dimensions. I've got all that written up here. I'll post a little picture, and if you need a copy of that, sent to you, emailed to you, let me know, I'll send you a copy of it just the same, but you see how this thing works. I'm gonna go all of it and see how it goes, put it back down, and then we're taking this thing off to mount the body back to the subframe. Okay, the thing that I wanted to show you is, right when it gets to that point of almost going over by itself, it is a little top heavy. Now, it can be managed, as you can see here holding on to it, but it wants to go on over. You can kind of nurse it over my hand here. Now, I'm not putting all my body weight into it, but you can see it, it, it kind of goes on its own. That was also done. Now that thing is all the way up 
on its rest. Then you do this here, can't come back down on you. Now, as you can see, like I was talking about here, it flips up there, sits completely down on our stop. And that way it keeps from going all the way over. And I've got all kinds of room to work. It's almost perpendicular, but you can see it has a little bit of a lean. But now you can do painting, run the lines, any kind of body repair, welding, um, patching of the floors, whatever you want to do. Now, with that being said, this design only works if you got a strong enough car body to not twist and fall apart. So rockers have to be pretty solid. Um, frame rails obviously need to be in place. This is not necessarily a rotisserie do a lot of metal work, but just maybe finer details and cleanup. And if you're doing some floorboard patches, this would probably be a fantastic setup, but any major structural welding, I wouldn't recommend putting it on a rotisserie of any kind, really. Keep it square to your frame jig, frame table, or what we do here at the Vinyl Village Garage, level it to your shop floor and use your bubble level to make sure everything is square. So. Um, this little piece of a disclaimer advice or just friendly help advice. Make sure your car goes down the road straight when it's done. So there you have it flipped up on its side for its last time. The great pumpkin is going to come on down and hook back to this bad boy right here. Now, of course, with the wheels on it, it does make this kind of nice. You can kind of literally roll this thing around with one finger. These casters are super fantastic casters they come off of our uh, some of our equipment work when the tires get all worn out of them they throw them in the trash so those are free cycles that's what we're going to call that because that's what we like to do here save a few bucks on some free parts so that's pretty close to get this thing unbolted i don't really feel like cover the suit greatly on the video the upper cylinder mount this is where the cylinder mounts up here on the top as you can see i welded a nut back here plated it drilled the holes so when I stab the cylinder through the top of it, I basically put the bolt through and have something to actually thread into. And then the actual cylinder pushes against the shoulder of this bolter, as you can see. So that's where all the weight's being put. Now this is probably, again, way over-engineered. Don't have to do it that complicated. You could probably just weld a nut to this and uh, probably call it pretty good, actually. But that was how I did mine, just in case you wanted to see it. Well, there you have it. The amazing car flipper thing has done its job. You see how it works. You know how the components go together. Like I said, I got some drawings here posted. You guys want a copy of it, I'll send it to you. But next go around, we're going to get this thing all set up to put that back on the body. Um, now, of course, I'd say maybe I'd let you borrow the car body flipper thing, but uh, that little situation, the frame jig that I'd made up, it disappeared, unfortunately. It got lost in shipping. Hard to believe something as big as four foot by four foot, 10 inches tall and 100 and some odd pounds somehow got lost so unfortunately it is gone so i need to find another car i will probably make another frame rail jig because i tell you that thing was super nice to have and saved me a lot of headaches so i will probably make a new one 2.0 version a little newer gooder and better i got some ideas that uh, would definitely help ease the pain i guess of putting a car together that's what this whole thing is about trial and error sharing the knowledge having some fun and improving each time and getting better and of course now i get to share that with you uh, but anyway, I've said enough. Appreciate you following me on that journey. Next go around, please subscribe. You want to see that thing hooked back up to the car body? Tell your friends. Like to see this thing keep continuing to grow. We've hit over 3,000 subscribers somehow. You crazy people like seeing this silliness. And that was the exact plan. So far, so good. Having a lot of fun with it still. And the weather's holding out too. So anyway, enough of this. Get back to uh, clean up some of my mess here and get that frame body flipper thingy off. And we'll get the two things put together. And uh, we'll catch you then.